All right, uh, let's look at the Torricelli's law, All right? Let's say we have a water tank with a hole on the bottom and the water is drained through that hole, All right? Uh, here's what the Torricelli's law states. The time rate of change of the volume of the water in the tank is proportional to the square root of the depth of the water. All right, so let's translate that into a differential equation. All right, so time rate of change of the volume, so it's just going to be the derivative of the volume V with respect to time dt is equal to, um, all right, proportional to, so it's going to be, I'm going to use negative since volume is decreasing, so it's a negative k, and then square root of the depth of the water. So it's a square root of depth of the water, in this case I'm using y. All right, so here's the different equation, and the volume, initial volume, let's say we have v, v0 or something like that, so we can say v of 0 is equal to v0. All right, so that's the different equation and initial value, uh, value condition. They are uh, both combined called the initial value problem. All right, but uh, we should probably wonder why square root of y, All right? So y square root. All right, so uh, I'm gonna pretend that uh, I know some physics here. All right, so here's an explanation, All right? So we can think of, um, let's say, um, a, a mass m of a water. So let's say you have a mass m. So I'm going to just draw a picture here. All right, so here's m. All right. Then you can think of this, uh, uh, basically, a, a chunk of water is free falling through the hole. So this guy is basically free falling through the hole. All right. So that's what's going on. And then we can talk about the, uh, uh, in terms of energy, all right? So let's talk about the potential energy and the kinetic energy, all right? So let's say the, this chunk of water at the top of the surface of the water. So the um, uh, potential energy, um, you know, uh, uh, assuming that, that the bottom of the uh, tank is zero, then potential energy would be mgy, right? So I'm going to just write that. So potential energy is mass times acceleration times height. Height, in this case, is, uh, is y, right? And then uh, since m is free falling, and uh, if you look at the uh, a velocity of that chunk of water, just when it goes through the hole would be, so let's use the V. Uh, remember that the kinetic energy is one half mass times uh, velocity squared, right? So potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So uh, by the uh, conser conservation of energy, these should be equal to each other. All right, so let's find the, uh, let's solve this equation for volume V, all right? So this is going to be, all right? First, uh, we can just uh, divide through by M, so we can cancel M here and M there, all right? Then I'm going to multiply by two. So we get uh, two G Y, is equal to um, uh, v squared, All right? Then we can take the square root of both sides. So you get the square root of two uh, g y is equal to uh, velocity v, All right? Velocity is just uh, you know when this how fast this guy is shooting out. All right, then uh, since we have to relate that to the volume V, all right, so think about the rate of change of the volume with respect to time, all right? This can be found by 
All right, so the, let's see, the um, rate of change of the volume, so it's going to be, first of all, negative because uh, it's uh, decreasing, all right? And you can find it by, by A is the area of the hole. So surf area of the hole times the volume, uh, the velocity it's shooting out. So it's going to be negative A times V, all right? Since we already found V, which is the square root of a 2GY, so we plug that in. So you have a negative A square root of 2GY. All right, and a 2G is just a constant, so I'm going to write it as a negative A square root of uh, 2G separately from a square root of Y. All right. Uh, since uh, here, uh, this part is, oops, sorry, uh, this part is just a constant. A is a constant because that's the area of the hole, and G is the uh, acceleration by gravity, so it's going to be constant. We're going to use uh, K for that, so uh, without the negative sign. So therefore, this is going to be negative K times square root of Y, All right? So that's why the rate of change of the volume with respect to time is proportional to square root of y. All right? Uh, that's it. I hope that uh, this was clear.